Are your earlobes out of proportion? If you are bothered by elongated lobes or want to repair gauged ears, then you might want to consider earlobe repair treatment. Learn all about it today here on The Younger You. I'm on top of the world and now I'm living And the good just gets better, keeps on giving Not even close to the end, it's just beginning Life is getting lighter while the days are getting brighter, yeah And if the good, I won't even worry anymore Took all my cares, still can kick them all out the door Go on a try, come and tell me what you're waiting for Move and keep them going till your life is overflowing, yeah Welcome to The Younger You. Today on the show we're talking about earlobe repairs. Today's patients, Ben and Jason, need help repairing what we know as a gauged ear. But earlobe repair can correct other problems as well. Let's talk to the surgeon who performed today's procedures, and that of course is Dr. Barson. Dr. Barson, of course, we're doing the surgeries today to actually fix gauged ears. So that's a self-inflicted issue. How do men and women actually get the bigger earlobes genetically? Well, you know, sometimes it just runs in the family, but earlobes and uh, a lot of people continue to grow over time. And so the, by the time people are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, the earlobes may be actually twice as big as they were when they were in their 30s. What can you have done? You, can you have them chopped off or? Well, we don't call it well, chopping off. Well, what do you off, do? But you, do you, do? you reform them. Okay. And it all Reshape, depends, I should say. Yeah. You, it all depends on the, the person and what their goal is. And, you know, if they've had earrings before or if they've, you know, got some problem that it's split out or it's, it's stretched because of heavy earrings. You have it reshaped or reformed, is that correct? Yes. Now, if you have a ripped earlobe as well as your earlobe doing too, being too big, can you get both done at the same time? Sure. In fact, it's, uh, it's preferable because if you try to do them separate, the result may not be as good as if you do them as a combined uh, procedure. What do you see more of, gauged ear repairs or earlobe reconstructive surgery? Probably more than just the earlobe reconstruction because uh, a lot of women, you know, and it's very common, you know, when a, a younger woman with little kids, little kids grab anything that's shiny. And they just pull on that earlobe, don't they? Yeah, and then, so a lot of women get stretched, torn earlobes that way. Sometimes it's just over time. They'll eventually work their way down through the earlobe to the point where they're just really hanging there and, and they can't get the earrings to stay in like they want yeah, them to. Yeah. So they want to do something else. Okay, so let's get into the gauged earlobe issue. Yeah. Self-inflicted, okay? Well, totally. Just explain a little bit about what a gauged ear lobe is. Well, it's a it's a thing I, I assume it started in Africa because that's where, you know, back in the 50s and 60s they were mm. showing more of that where the certain tribes would put... Uh, Either uh, in the ear or lip or nose, you'd yeah, see a lot of that. It, uh, yes, and, and that's, you know, just a... It's a way of expressing beauty, I guess, or some mm. other trait that they wanted to uh, to exemplify. But but we're not expressing that here in America. Well, in America, do you think you it's know, still a, a sign of, of beauty, or is it more <laughs> of a sign of rebelling? Oh or? no, I think most people will tell you it's a sign of rebelling. Well, how long does it take for the hole to get that big? Well, you have to work it up over time. Of course, you can't just do that overnight. You so they go through a series of sm uh, a small uh, to begin with, and then just gradually increase it in mm. size. It's not a surgical procedure to stretch out no, the No, not at all. It's, it's, uh, uh, this is what I'm saying. It's a self-inflicted issue. Yes, it's a and manual procedure. some people, it's so cool on. Like I've seen and I think you're a pretty cool dude, you know, to do that. But I worry about later in life. Well, and that's one of the things we see is people do have difficulty because not everybody accepts that. Can the holes from the gauges that they put in close up naturally? No. Not no, at all, for any all. reason? No. Once, um, once the... The inner part of the ear that has been re-epithelialized, in other words, the skin, hmm. has grown completely around it. It's sort of like, it doesn't how, matter how hard I push my earlobe against my neck, it's never going to grow to it. Hmm. And so it's sort of that way. Now you've got yeah. all of this extra tissue you have to do something with. Is it a simple procedure to have fixed? Well, it's, yes, it can be simple, but a lot of times it's not. Does and it a lot of times each each ear is different. Okay. We'll okay. actually do a different procedure on the same person, different ear. Really? Because one is stretched out more or it's, it's stretched out differently. It's it's thinner at the bottom and the other one's thicker at the bottom. It doesn't, they don't match. So sometimes you actually do a different procedure on each ear on the same person. Because we all have different procedures? Earlobes or? Well, no, 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 because you've you got know, me worried now. I'm thinking, <laughs> oh my lord, am I a different so shape? So if you if you put a, an earlobe hole here, yes, and one here, but they're not exactly the same place. Oh, gotcha. As you stretch them out, oh, of this course. one will be shaped different, the the tissue, than this will is because they started different. Scarring. Uh, the scarring, you do get some scarring, but you know the 
Earlobe is very forgiving, and if you do it right, mm. uh, usually there's very little scarring afterwards. Okay, a girl's come in, she's had the gauging done, it's pretty serious, like a 20 cent piece size. You've repaired the ear, and then they come back and they say, Dr. Barson, I really wanted to have my ears pierced. Well sure, Possible? they can get repairs. The um, incisions and the correction has to be healed. And so usually we don't like them to do that probably maybe for three months. Okay, so probably look, four or five months after the procedure, then you're safe to have your, your sure. piercing done. Okay, all right, thank you, Dr. Barson. Would you have thought the same person could have two different shaped earlobes? I didn't. Coming up after the break, we get to watch as one of our patients, Jason, actually gets earlobe repair surgery. It's giveaway time on The Younger You. Enter for your chance to win a signed copy of our personal trainer, Greg Marshall's book, Body Fit. Head over to theyoungeryou.tv forward slash contest to enter. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and how to join The Younger You conversation. The following footage contains surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. We just heard from Dr. Barson about how genetics can affect the shape of your earlobes. But what about when people choose to actually gauge their ears? Let's watch as Jason has his gauged ears all stitched up. I'm Jason and I'm 39 years old. I'm here to have the earlobe repair surgery. Yeah, I'm a little poke. Tank cup from in this one fact. It only hurts one of us. Feeling a little better now? Yeah. I'm put these sterile cows on you here for a second. Make you all warm and snuggly, okay? Years ago, I did something that I thought was cool, and back then it was cool, but as I get older now, it's not that cool anymore. You know, now that I look in the mirror and it's just a hole there, it's not, I don't want to look that way. Head the other way. Excellent. People get a perception of you because you look different, you know. I'm sure it happens with everybody, even people that don't have tattoos and caged ears. Um, I think they can be rad when you're young. I wouldn't want gauged ears on someone like Katie. I'm all for gauged ears. I used to have gauged ears. They just kind of shrunk over time, so I think the, it's a self-expression. Generally, people with gauged ears, I, I mean, I, I thought it was a pretty cool trend for a while. Like, uh, back when I was in, like, uh, ninth grade or something, I was like, oh, those are really sweet. Uh, as I've gotten older, I kind of think they're a little bit, um, they're not good for work, perhaps. I, I think that's the general answer. Depends if they're like huge or not. Like I, I don't know if you can fit like a soda can through. I think it's time to stop. I don't know if a gauged ear would be less approachable, or but I, I personally I don't like it. I, I know when people started gauging their ears at, at public places, um, they would make them cover them with a bandaid, and that's not the case anymore. Uh, no, actually, a lot of my friends uh, back home they have them. They're very approachable in my mind. Um, I think to other people they might look a little bit funny or intimidating. I think it's hit or miss. I think it could make somebody approachable, but I, yeah, I think it could be the other way around. Like if you're always scary, like I said, man, if you just have like these huge floppy elephant ears, then yeah, that's it's kind of intimidating. I think <laughs> it's a culture thing. Like when you live very like, let's say you live in a big city, it might be not a big deal, but if you live like in Utah, it can be a little bit different and hard on people with gauge ears, but for me, I really don't care. Like, you know, my place, people, they can hire with people with gauge earring, I mean ears, but it really doesn't matter.
there's one less thing holding me back, you know, when I try to find a more promising career. I have a son that's autistic, severe autism, and I've been thinking about going into working with kids with disabilities. And, you know, they, they don't perceive me as, they don't care, you know what I mean? So it really doesn't, really doesn't affect that, but, you know, if that doesn't work out, I might want to do something else, so. My wife thinks it's a, it's a good thing to do. It'll make me happier, and she's you know all about what makes me happy and about what makes her happy. So excellent. Okay, good. You know, to help me see myself differently and feel better about myself and feel better about the way other people look at me. Jason's gauges weren't very large. What does an earlobe repair surgery look like with a much larger hole? After the break, we will watch as our next patient, Ben, has his gauge surgery. Looking for the perfect beauty product? Each week, The Younger You highlights a standout product in the health and beauty industry. Head over to theyoungeryou.tv and check it out. Love to hear your comments. The following footage contains surgical procedures. It may be too graphic for some viewers. We watched as Dr. Barson closed up Jason's gauged lobes. Let's take a quick look at Ben's surgery and hear why he chose to have his earlobes repaired. My name is Ben and I'm 26 years old. I'm here today to get my earlobes surgically repaired. Okay, well Ben, uh... Uh, go ahead and repair your earlobes today. You will have some a little scar, of course. There's no way of getting right. around it without a scar. <laughs> right. uh, but over time, those scars actually uh, kind of fade away and become very okay. uh, in, uh, inconspicuous. And actually, we uh, after you can come back and we can laser the scars, and that will actually improve them a little bit. So why don't you grab that mirror there okay. and just go ahead and look on this side. So what we're going to do is, this is the part that's very thin, and so we're going to kind of, that's going to be the sacrificial part, okay. and then we'll bring this over here so that you have kind of a normal looking, right, so uh, the, you know, the thicker up all part of my ear a little yeah. bit. Yeah, and the other side is a, in a similar okay. fashion, it's not right. quite, as, quite as bad, this isn't as thinned out, but it'll, right. it'll still be, uh, uh, we'll do those that same way. There's, there's a number of ways. There's about six ways of closing these, kind of depending on how the, the loop has formed right, and how big it is and stuff. So, okay. so for you, I think that'll be the best option. Great. Okay. I just want to get them sewn up just for personal reasons, professional reasons, just, um, just looking ahead towards the future. So what we're going to do now is just do a little numbing. So I, I started maybe seven or eight years ago and I've I mean they they were up to an inch and a half and I had them at you know at that size probably for like three or four years it's not that I don't like them necessarily anymore it's just I'm older now and it's just not for me and uh, I just kind of over it I'm trying to make a lot of changes right now as far as I'm um, trying to get to school finally and gain some skills and get a, an actual career. This doesn't hold me back from getting just a job, but if I want to further myself beyond that, then yeah, I think this is this this will help a lot.
far as just walking down the street or going to the mall or something. <laughs> you know, I don't have to worry about maybe people who aren't used to it just staring, oh, look at that guy, you know. <laughs> people are always like, oh, did that hurt? That's their first question, did that hurt? Or, <laughs> you know, how did you do that? Stuff like that, so yeah. I've had people, they'll just come right up to me and just like, without even asking me, they'll just like tap it or they just, I'm sorry, I just, I just want to feel it. <laughs> This is going to be our anchor stitch, which will orient everything else after that. Um, my mom is ecstatic that I'm getting them done. I mean, she's been advocating to, for me to get them sewn up ever since. I got them done, practically. He, he's great. He makes me feel comfortable, for sure, you know, because, I mean, I'm a little nervous, <laughs> for sure. Not that I haven't already done things to my ears before, but, um, it, I mean, it's a different situation. I want him to do a good job, and, and he's definitely done a great job explaining everything to me, so... I mean, I just expect to be looked at a little more seriously and maybe with a little more respect generally, especially in professional settings. On the next part of the show, I'll be talking to Dr. Barson in the studio to find out how the surgeries went. Plus, we will be joined by self-proclaimed rebel Jason to find out if this actual surgery maybe softened him up just a little bit. Like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter for updates on the show and how to join the Younger You conversation. It's giveaway time on the Younger You. Enter for your chance to win a signed copy of our personal trainer, Greg Marshall's book, Body Fit. Head over to theyoungeryou.tv forward slash contest to enter. We've learned all about earlobes and watched two earlobe repair surgeries. Now let's take a look at the results and find out if Jason feels, was it worth the pain? Welcome back. Dr. Barson and myself have been joined in the studio by Jason. But before we get into that, Jason, let's look at your before and after shots. Do, are you Just, happy with your yeah. earlobes looking like that? Yeah. So why did you have this procedure done? Because uh, just tired of the upkeep on them. Okay. So constantly have to clean them, and where I work, I get a lot of sawdust and stuff built up on them. Okay, so it was more of a bit of a health issue. Really. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not saying you got sick from them, but you didn't feel that having the, the gauges in your earlobes was a major issue apart from the cleanliness. Exactly. Okay, why did you have them done in the first place? I uh, just wanted to be different. Well, Dr. Um, Barson and I were saying that most people have them done now to be a little bit different, be a bit of a rebel, were you a rebel? Exactly. Yeah. Are you a rebel? Still am. Oh, okay. Exactly. Well, I know. I can without tell. The, I'm a little without bit, without the holes in my ears. I'm not going to go too deep with the questions in case you bop me one. Okay. <laughs> Do you think he might, Dr. Barson? He's big enough. He's big enough. How hard was it to actually close up the earlobes? Uh, uh, Jason actually had two different kinds of procedures: one on one ear and one on the other. As I was saying before, sometimes the um, the extra skin that is formed, mm. the extra tissue, is not the same on each side. So sometimes you use a little different procedure on each side. Jason, when did you have the gauges put in? I don't exactly remember. Probably 11, 12 years ago. 12 years ago, say. And do you feel? And I want to ask you because I think a lot of parents are watching what you're going to say because in society it's your appearance that gets you ahead in life. Yeah. Do you feel that having them 
held you back? Well, I was I was covered with tattoos before that, so that you know that would be what held me back. But okay, it would be you know think long and hard about doing it. But you don't regret it. No, I don't regret it. Yeah, because nowadays, like I look at your tattoos, and that to me right now, I think nothing of it because I see it everywhere. Gauges on the earlobes now, I don't see a lot of. I did maybe five, six, seven years ago, Dr. Barson, is that about right? It, they seem to be being taken out because it, it seems a more of an aggressive look. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. What did your family and friends think when you said, I'm taking them out? They didn't really say anything. They went, you, you know, rebel. <laughs> I still look like a rebel no matter what. Because I don't think you do. Like, I don't see the tattoos as that formation. It just really depends on the career path that you want to go professionally. Um, there are lots of careers that are really open to self-expression, so therefore gauged ears aren't a problem, whereas there are other professions where it's very looked down on. Like I said, you know, so some people like to judge you from outside what you look like instead of what you do. I think a gauged ear could hurt someone professionally. Um, it's, it's not something you can cover up later in life like a tattoo or have removed once it's done it's permanent if your son came to you and said dad i'm gonna have the gauges put in and i'm 15 what do you say to him i'd make him wait till he's 18 and then he, you know that's his decision you'd still let him go ahead with it yeah okay dr barson you were saying to me that it's more adults coming in yeah, having it done we've never had anybody bring a, a teenager or something like that in to get a gauged ear takes time, and so it's something that you're going to know for a long time <laughs> before it gets to the point where it's going to be a problem. So really, it's people itself, you know, initiate. They do, mm. you know, they started the gauge, and they're the one that makes the decision to stop it. How long did it take you to get the next size up and the next size up again? Because mm -hmm. you you're supposed to wait, you know, probably about a month, a month and a half, because it'll be pretty sore for a while, and then when the the pain goes away, then you jump up to the next size. So within a year, you could probably have four times the size that you yeah, started with. pretty big. Does it hurt? I can it, only imagine. As you go to the bigger sizes, it starts out you're not stretching as much, but when you get to the bigger sizes, it's a bigger stretch. What does it feel like when they're hanging there? No, you don't really notice it. At all? I mean, mine, mine weren't very big, hmm. but I assume that as they get bigger, the, the jewelry is heavier, of so you might notice it more. When you look at yourself now in the mirror, do you go, gee, I'm glad I had them fixed up? Yeah, you are. I do, yeah. Why now then? When I when I stretched them, I was a little bit aggressive and I had tears and, you know. They don't look like you've had any issues, Jason. What do you think? Oh, I'm, I'm very happy with the way it turned out. Wife's happy? Yeah. Tickled pink, as they say. Yeah, yeah. Okay, because you don't look like an aggressive bloke. You know, sitting here and now talking to you, and I have to say, I'm glad you had it done because I think appearances are what gets you through life. And I'm glad to see that you feel a part of that as well. Am I correct in saying yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like the fact that you also are happy enough to actually say, you know what, I did it, I was a bit of a rebel, I wanted it closed up, but you didn't really do it for a job either. You did nope. it because you wanted to do Still it. Still be a rebel. Hey, thank you so much. I really appreciate you showing us this thank as you. well. Dr. Barson, again, good job. Thank you. I hope throughout the course of many of the shows that you've seen over the year that you've learned how to improve your life, not only physically, but also emotionally and inspirationally. For more information about this episode and all the others that we've done, head over to our website at theyoungeryou.tv and I'll see you soon. The Younger You set provided by Madison McCord Interiors.